Greetings, this is Dr. Derek Ong with the continuation of the series of using SPSS for data analysis for your research. Now, uh, I'm going to continue on with the experimental design uh, analysis and I'm going to expand on the uh, idea of uh, analysis of variance as from my previous video. And this video, I'm going to look into uh, multiple analysis of variance. So, what is the difference between ANOVA and RANOVA? MANOVA basically looks at the differences between more than two categories for n independent variables. So this could be uh, one independent variable, that means one-way MANOVA, or if it's two independent variables, then it will be two-way MANOVA. Uh, independent variables with m dependent variables, so which means we are now considering more than just one dependent variable, which uh, hence gives you the word multiple analysis of variance at the same time. Now there are many um, literature out there that uh, do uh, have um, a, a, an agreement on why uh, certain variables that are linked together should uh, be analyzed as MANOVA rather than separate ANOVA, so I would like to encourage you to go and read up on these literature uh, to find out whether it is more appropriate to do separate ANOVAs or it is it more appropriate to do uh, MANOVAs. Okay, so coming to our example here, I'm going to be doing two dependent variables, which is sales and my MLC here is known as the um, uh, motivational level combined and um, two independent variables whereby I'm going to use race uh, with three categories, Malay, Indian, Chinese, gender, which is two categories, uh, which is male and female. And uh, what I'm saying is, uh, when I do my MANOVA, is that there's a difference between the races in terms of sales and MLC, and there's a difference between gender in terms of sales and MLC. Also, there is an interaction between uh, all the categories combined together, the six categories, Malay male, Malay Indian, Malay Chinese, female uh, Malay, female Indian, and female Chinese for both sales and MLC. So we are actually doing uh, two ANOVAs together, but we are doing it under MANOVA. Uh, one of the reasons is because uh, some literature has mentioned that if you do separate ANOVAs for certain types of dependent variables, you might get an inflated type 1 error. So for this, I am going to be doing a MANOVA. And then the differences, of course, will be checked against the F, degree of freedom 1, degree of freedom 2. Degree of freedom 1 probably would be the source of variation, and degree of freedom 2 would be the source of error. All right, so let's go into our data set. So this is our data set where we have two independent variables here, race, one, two, and three, Malay, Indian, Chinese, and of course, gender, male and female, and our dependent variables, sales, and of course, MLC, which is motivational levels combined. So we go to analyze, general linear model, now, since we're going to be using more than one dependent variable, we now use the multivariate analysis. Okay, so put in your sales in your dependent variables. Now, you notice that dependent variables now can take in more than just one uh, dependent variable. So I'm putting in sales, motivation, level scores, or level combined. I'm going to put in the race and the gender as the fixed factor for now. In the plots, again, uh, I'm going to, as from my previous ANOVA video, I'm going to put in a gender, uh, sorry, the race, the one with more categories on the horizontal, and put in the gender on separate lines, and I press add. So now, as different from the ANOVA video, this multivariate video, this MANOVA video, is going to show, is going to produce for you two separate graphs, one interaction graph for sales and one interaction graph for MLC. Continue. I'm going to go to sorry, options. I'm going to get the uh, estimated marginal means for compare effects for the main effects, 
and I'm going to use LSD click on these three descriptive estimates and effect size for this video I'm not going to uh, be showing you the um, uh, what do you call this, the uh, interaction uh, post hoc effects. Please refer to my previous video, um, video number 14, on how to get interaction post hoc effects. So you can use that idea and then uh, add on to the syntax that we will produce here for the interaction effect for both the MLC and for sales. All right, just to take note from that, continue, press OK, and of course the results come out. So we have the uh, between subject factors, we can see the sample sizes, and the uh, mean, the difference in mean for the two dependent variables, as well as the interaction between the variables, right, between race and then gender. Uh, the more important thing we need to look at now is this table here, which is the test of between subject effects. So let's go there. What I need to draw your attention to is um, these three uh, uh, rows. So you notice that race now has two dependent variables, gender has two, interaction has two, and error also has two. So we're comparing uh, dependent variable to dependent variable. So we're uh, comparing the mean square for the sales and the error for the sales. So that's where we get our ratio of our F. So if you look here, we are going to put in, uh, let's say for sales, F, degree of freedom 2, 9, with the f of 52.224 and it's not significant at 0 0.031 uh, sorry it's significant at 0 0.031 so it's with, with one star and uh, we also have race uh, for motivation level scores and it is not significant so the degree of freedom is still the same it's 29 so you notice that the uh, for sales uh, the only thing that's significant is race and interaction. But for motivation levels, nothing is significant. So we need to transfer all that information into our table. So you could set up a table like this, uh, which I have done. So if you want to see how the numbers come about, perhaps you can pause this video or slow down the video and see how these numbers uh, appear from here, this table. Okay, and then of course, make sure you put in the legend down here. Uh, there are no stars, means they are not significant. Because one star means they're significant at 5%, but not significant at 1%. Okay, and uh, for the interaction effects, you may want to have a separate table to uh, report the interaction effects. Coming down here, back to our uh, report um, output, you can see they show the interaction effects for, <coughs> for the race. Yeah, with different dependent variables and they show the interaction effect for the gender but they don't show the interaction effects uh, after this so that's where you have to look into my previous video uh, my two-way ANOVA to see how to put in the post hoc interaction effects okay uh, of course the screen plots you have two plots here and uh, with these two plots, you can then uh, put in to the results. As you can see, there's a major interaction in terms of the sales, but not much of interaction because it looks fairly parallel, although they're crossing. As I mentioned before, it doesn't mean that just because they're crossing that there is going to be interaction. Um, more often than not, it does mean that, but for this case, it doesn't mean that there's an interaction, so we don't say there's an interaction here. 
Okay, so you can use um, ANOVA to uh, analyze multiple dependent variables, and it does doesn't matter how many category. Uh, sorry, it doesn't matter how many independent variables you have. So I hope you learned something from this video. Thank you for watching, and do email me if you have further questions. Thank you.